Cataractcoach.com with another interesting case. This time a young patient, 30 years old, with a white cataract. Tripan blue dye is instilled in the anterior chamber. We'll dilute this down using some anesthetic. Over the course of about one or two months, this patient had liquefaction of all the cortex and became absolutely white. This patient dropped the acuity from 2020 to count fingers vision. We're going to fill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic and we want a good fill, a solid fill. We want the anterior chamber pressure to be high, at least 40, maybe even 50 millimeters of mercury. And we're checking the pressure there. It's a very firm eye. Why is that? Well, we know there's pressure in the capsular bag from the liquefied cortex. We need to have the pressure in the AC higher than the pressure inside the capsular bag. Just a little more viscoelastic for good measure. That's a very firm eye. We're going to use specialized instruments here. These are small forceps that go through the paracentesis. We're going to poke in and start our capsular axis. So the reason why we don't have a main incision is if we make the big incision, the big incision will be very difficult to keep the AC pressurized. With the big incision, viscoelastic will come out. As soon as I poke in the capsule, God, it wants to run out. I'm holding onto it, trying to grab it. Despite having a high AC pressure, it ran out. As soon as we grabbed it, it ran out. So I'll complete it the other direction to hopefully stabilize it. And now we have this tiny eccentric capsular opening. And in your screen at about the two o'clock position, it did radialize outward. I'll try grab again with the forceps. Can we tear the other direction? I'm having a hard time doing this right now. The AC is still nicely pressurized, but the bag pressure is up there as well. And there's a posterior pressure pushing from the back forwards into the anterior chamber from that intumescent lens. So I'm going to make a second paracentesis. Remember, we still don't have a main phaco incision. I told you the patient's young, only about 30 years old. As a result, there's not a lot of nuclear density. This patient's cataract is pri very soft. It's primarily just the white opacified cortex. So now with two paracentesis incisions in the eye, we're going to do a bimanual INA, irrigation aspiration. We're going to have one instrument each in each hand, and we're going to use 23 gauge instrumentation here. So again, we have a paracentesis there for the right hand, one for the left. We'll put the irrigator in the left hand. Here comes the aspirator then in the right hand. These are a little bit of a tight fit. The paracentesis is only about a millimeter wide. There we go. We'll put the aspirator inside that capsule opening and try to evacuate as much of the lens material as possible. Now this happened and we got a radialized capsular axis here. What are the other options? Well, we could have done other things. Some people have described using the phaco probe to punch a hole in the anterior lens capsule, a nice round hole. We could have done the double rexus technique, which you're going to see soon and uh, later this week. We could have also used a needle to help go inside and puncture the lens capsule and aspirate out any liquid. Again, various techniques, they all involve the same physics, equalizing the pressure gradient from the capsular bag and the anterior chamber. Remember, the issue in all these intumescent cataracts is a pressurized capsular bag. That's why we have so little control. In addition, young people like this, this 30-year-old, their capsules are far more elastic than an older patient. We've done a lot of removal of the lens material here with the aspirator in the right hand. We can, of course, also switch hands and go from there. Now we have to think in, our back, in the back of our mind, what are we going to do for that capsular opening? We can't leave it like that. We'll have to address that. So most of the lens material here is removed. We'll clean it up a little bit more towards the end. Looking pretty good. We can polish that out more, switch hands, go the other direction. We still need to enlarge our capsular axis. Against a young patient that's 30 years old, we need to be able to provide a stable place for our intraocular lens for the next 
50 or 60 years or however long this patient lives. So there we go, removing more cortex. You notice we did switch hands. Now the aspirator is in the left hand and the irrigator is in the right. This is why it's important. Cataract surgeons, in fact, any ophthalmic surgeons must be able to use both hands. I tell my young residents who are in training, start eating and brushing your teeth and shaving and doing routine daily tasks with your non-dominant hand. For most of them, that's their left hand. Because you need to help strengthen your ability to use both hands so that you can switch back and forth, left to right, without much issue. A little bit more cleanup of the cortex material. Sometimes in these white cataracts where it's opacified cortex in a young patient, you may not be able to remove every little thing. In addition, if you look at the three Purkinje light reflections off the cornea, you see that we've enhanced the red reflex lights. Those are the two twin lights that are larger, as opposed to the main light, which is off to the side. And by enhancing the red reflex light, we do see more of this material, even though it's not visually significant. But it does make for a better video so that I can teach our audience here. So that's cleaned up pretty nicely. At this point, let's fill the capsule bag with viscoelastic. So here's the viscoelastic. Now, at this point, we're using the cohesive viscoelastic. There you see our caps are opening. That's what we had at the beginning. Being careful not to apply too much pressure. I don't want to radialize that anymore. So I'm filling in the bag, but also filling the AC. And that's what we started off with. And you see there at about the 2 o'clock position, it is radialized out towards those onules. That's not going to pose much of an issue long term. We just have to be careful that during our maneuvers here, we don't allow that radialized area to zip backwards. Micro scissors being placed in the eye to just nick the capsule barely right there. This micro instrumentation set is available for many manufacturers, and they're very useful. We'll switch back to the forceps. We'll grab where we nicked the capsule, and let's start tearing the rexus in the other direction. We want to end up with a nice round capsule rexus which will be intact other than the one area that's radialized. So taking our time, we'll finish this nicely. Again, remember, this is still in a closed eye other than the two paracentesis. There is no main phaco incision at this point. So now we have a much better caps for opening. And we can get ready for implantation of our new lens. This is a tough case, and I'm, you know, I want to show you that we can all have these uh, types of challenges, but we can recover from it. Here's the main incision being made now. This is going to be using for the lens implantation, making it sufficiently long so it'll self-seal. That looks great. And then we'll get the lens and put that in the eye. Here comes the lens. And so this is a smaller incision. We didn't want to make it too large of an incision, so I make a tiny incision. Advance the lens. There it is. That was the wound assist technique, and now we'll get the lens and the capsule back. Very important at this here, at this juncture, be very careful in placing the lens. Too much pressure on the capsule bag or pushing in the one direction where it's radialized will cause that to rip posterior, damage the posterior capsule, then we can't place this lens. So there's the lens, beautifully centered, looks great. And it's nicely positioned in the visual axis. You'll notice that there are some rings on the center of the eye well, a very subtle sign there. This is a multifocal lens for this patient. A multifocal lens in an otherwise totally healthy patient can certainly work well. In this case in particular, it's very difficult to put a 30-year-old into reading glasses. As we know, if we give him a monofocal lens, the patient will become instantly presbyopic for life and have no near vision with a plano goal in both eyes. So in this case, we decided to do a multifocal lens. And we did the patient's surgery in both eyes, and so he has matching multifocal lenses. And I can tell you he had a nice recovery afterwards. The patient's very happy with his visual progress. So there's the lens, beautifully centered. We learned a lot from this case. One, we can try all our techniques to keep the AC pressure high. Even then, when we poke into the lens capsule, we can have a lot of posterior pressure pushing forwards from the intumescent cataract. 
We'll try our best to control things. If we can, great. If we cannot control it and it does start to radialize, that's okay. We'll finish up that um, small capsule opening, leaving the radialized area alone. Remove as much lens material or cortex as we can with the bimanual IE set. And then once it's pressurized and equalized, we can either remove more lens material or we can proceed to enlarging the rexus. Don't leave the patient with a tiny capsule opening. It needs to have a sufficiently uh, normal size. And so in this case, we did enlarge to about 5 millimeters diameter. Here at the end, taking our time to remove the viscoelastic, and then we'll seal up the incisions and be done with the case. So there you have it. Patient had a beautiful outcome. Even though he had a radial radialized capsule rexus in that one quadrant, we were able to recover and provide the patient with a beautiful outcome. Thank you guys for watching this interesting case.